Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm back out on the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450 and today we are taking the bike for its first service uh, to a place called Smallie Cross Motorcycles in Derbyshire and I've also got a new set of tyres to go on the bike. So uh, if you're interested in this video, sit back, relax and come along for the ride. So we're literally just a couple of miles away now from the dealership where we bought the bike from. I'll try and get a little bit of a behind the scenes. Like I said, we did the tyre test last week and we found out that the stock tyres are not so good in that thick mud. Perfect in these conditions on the road. So I've got a set of new tyres and um, they're in the back of the van, which is uh, behind me at the minute. Here's the dealership just on the corner here. So we'll just uh, we'll just pull in. So what we'll do, we'll just get the tyres out. We'll show you what we've bought. Just check out some of these bikes outside here. We've got a beautiful lineup of the demo bikes: the Meteor 350, the Hunter 350, the Classic 350, the Shotgun, the Super Meteor 350, the Interceptor 650, and uh, the Himalayan 450 uh, with the black and gold. So here we go, then, guys. The Himalayan going in for its first service and uh, swapping out these tyres. Like I said, when we did the tyre test, we come to the conclusion that these tyres are absolutely fantastic on the road not so good in the mud so we've got amy here who's uh, brought the tires over for me and uh she's just going to get them out of the van and we'll just show you what we've bought there we go if you grab the the rear one Just pop these tyres here so you can uh, check them out. So these are the, the Heinau tyres. They are uh, a German made tyre. Uh, they're a 50-50 sort of tread. And uh, if I just show you the front one, you can perhaps see the difference. There's quite a bit more tread compared to the stock tyre. We'll just come round to the, the rear tyre. Yeah, there's, there's quite a, a big difference there. So I'm hoping these are going to hold up in the mud a lot better. Uh, they're not a full-on rally tyre. I didn't want that on this bike because I am going to use it on road. It's got this centrepiece. It's supposed to be quite long lasting. Uh, we'll only find that out over time, I guess. Um, I looked at quite a few different options for tyres and thank you for you guys putting them in the comments of what you're running. So the true test of these tyres will be when we get to the ABR festival and that'll be the perfect place to really push this bike and find out what these tyres are like. Like I said, it was a difficult one. You can be looking at tyres for a long time and there's quite a lot of choice now for these bikes and I'm sure they do all do a very good job. I wanted the 50-50 rather than the full-on rally which is what we're going to get fitted on here today. So let's get this bike in for its first service. So what, what type of oil would they put in before it's changed? It's synthetic the stuff that they now use compared to the stuff they used to use, which on the early models, which was more of a running in oil, this late one is a lot better. It seems a lot better quality coming back out. It's not as black as it used to be. Have we got a, a screen in yep, one of there? in both of them. Oh, okay. Yep, identical in both. And they just a case of uh, washing them out and popping them back in again. Yep. Usually get a little bit on them on first service. Okay, yeah. Just pretty much as we've done on all the Enfield range. But how much oil does it take? More or less two litres. Two litres? Yeah. If, you if you've got a two litre, you end up with about 50 mil left over on average. What, what type of oil is used in these? Uh, 1040 fully, uh, sorry, semi synthetic. 
can obviously see where I've uh, been taking it through a bit of dirt already on the bash plate there. It's... Yeah. Is that just brake cleaner you're using yeah, there? Yeah, just a brake cleaner. Just to strip all the gun off so I can see what's left in there. I'd rather use brake cleaner than some people use compressed air. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that idea personally. The uh, little ring is slightly magnetic. Uh, magnetic. So, okay. see the difference between the two. One's been white and one hasn't. So it just picks up. Yeah, of course. All right, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, does it matter which uh, one you undo first? Or? No. Uh, the back one has a lot more oil pressure behind it, so I tend to undo the front one first, especially on a warm engine, and then do the rear one, because if you don't get your drain in the right position, unfortunately you end up splashing the floor. <laughs> yeah. Well, story of my life, that is, when I do my dirt bike. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same when I've got the KTM on. There's always something that goes all over. <laughs> So the, the drain plugs that look exactly the same size, they've uh, also been, been cleaned down. So on the other side, we've got the oil filter. So what size is, have we got on for the... 14mm uh, Allen key for the uh, oil filter housing. Yeah, it's a fairly decent thread, isn't it? It is. And the spring retainer does stay on the cap better than some of the earlier models. Okay. That they always used to pop off, did they? Yeah, some of them mounted on the oil filter, others are on here. Sometimes they fell off. Okay, oh, that's different. I've not seen uh, one being took out like that before. Yeah, it's just an oil relief valve, so I just tend to find the easiest way to grab it is a pair of circlet pliers, just right. to push in, and you can grab it quite easily, okay. especially on a hot engine. I think I've actually got some of those. <laughs> Never it's, used them. It's good for most things. I mean, even most oil filters have got a similar recess, so to be able to grab a cartridge, it's just so much easier. Yeah. The only downside is you do get oil run right. down into the guard here. Okay. It runs straight off the casing down, so we use brake cleaning to wash it all through. Sometimes you will unfortunately get a slight smell of oil right. when you first ride off. Just like a bit of a... Yeah. So it's just a bit of residue, nothing to worry about. Just let it burn. <laughs> if you smell a burning, just keep going. Yeah, just keep going, it's all fine. <laughs> right, while they're draining, starts on the tyres. Have you, have you had anybody change their tyres this early? Not yet, I'm early? I mean, when the old model came out, literally days they were changing tyres. At the moment, now you're the first that I've dealt with that's had tyre change in any bike I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I did a little video last week just taking it through some of the mud and um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, they weren't gripping very well, <laughs> let's just say. I mean, but I've, around the south of India, these these tyres were perfect in the heat, yes. on the trails, there's a, there's a there's enough grip on there for, for that type of riding, but as soon as you get bogged down a bit, you I don't know if appreciate. these ones are going to be much better, but uh, I, I guess any, a, any grip's better than none. <laughs> I do see a lot of that Brandon particular uh, model of tyre on the old 411s. And I have fitted multiple sets yeah. for people, even when they've worn out, they've gone for the same again. So this, this is something I, I definitely need to practice taking wheels in and out. It's something I don't really do. I tend to take it to the local garage and <laughs> I know I know I know one day there's gonna be a a, 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 a puncher it. where uh, it's best to learn it before. Yep, the new push drive system's better. Don't lose them. No. <laughs> they're a lot better than the old ones. Well, time will tell with mileage, but at the moment they're really snug. Okay, nice. And don't lose the spacer either. <laughs> no, the new spacers have got a slight lip. Okay. So they are retained better. Let's grab one of these. I think a lot of people have been, been waiting for the tubeless tyres to come in, but what's, uh, what's your thoughts on the two? It's a, it's a it, question that opens a can of worms. Oh, it does. I mean, with riding Joro stuff, I've always dealt with tubes, so it's just second nature. I've never thought about it. Um, pros and cons, I prefer tube, uh, tubes off-road or more sort of off-road usage. You can adjust pressures drop it down relatively low and not worry about having to be burp air on the beads. Mm. Downside is you get a puncture on it in a tube, it goes down quick. Yep. 
Uh, tubeless, obviously, you can repair it side of the road without having to remove a wheel. So there's lots of pros and cons. But I mean, my, my question would be to people, have they ever done that, you know, because... Exactly, how many people... Yeah, unless you're on a proper adventure and you're away for days and you've trained. Because I've, I've actually fixed, I've plugged a tyre just, just to try it and it's, and it's not that easy on the roadside. No. It's, uh, it's, you know, so it's definitely worth having a practice. It's definitely worth having a practice if you've... Uh, if you're doing some serious if, remote you, trails, definitely. And also, there was a back order on the, the tubeless tyres as well, weren't there? Tubeless wheels. Yeah, really, uh, I think basically, I think about three weeks ago we received our first bike. Right. And I think the initial order was October last year for it. And later down the line, if I wanted to chuck a, chuck a, um, a, a spokeless rim in, yes. would they just fit straight in? or? Yes, yeah. uh, the hubs and everything, I imagine, I've not actually measured it. Or check specs, but they should have the same size bearings and uh, axles and lots, so they should just interchange. Trick is not to catch the end to. Yeah, I was just going to say that. That's that's the key, ain't it? Really, you start snagging it, then. Yeah. Unfortunately, it can be potluck sometimes. But ten to five, we don't use the lever and fully pop it over, I bring it up so many degrees and there's a time machine flips past you don't snag it on the side of the rim I mean, how, how difficult would it be to, to take a tube out of the side of the road? I mean, you, you, I've seen people use the side stand as yeah. the, as the, to get the tyre off. Just to get it to pop off the bead. If yeah. you get it to pop off the bead as long as you've got a reasonable tyre lever. Yeah. If you've not got at least one long lever, it could be two or three of you trying to struggle bending, trying to bend this little lever yeah, to try yeah. and get the rim off and you'll never do it. And again, it means carrying more kit with you, don't it? It does. There it's is a limit how much you can carry. And realistically, in the UK, how extreme your riding can be. Yeah. And it is the, is the stuff that you can put in the inner tube, like what these... these uh, <laughs> do they work if they get a puncher, like, a, like, like the, the foam spray yeah, type it, thing? Again, it depends on the location of the puncture, yep. the size of it, and how much air it actually loses before the actual chemical or the material inside seals the hole yeah. and because the tube flexes slightly independent of the tyre it's still got some move if it's something like a thorn you're probably good if it's something like a screw with a jagged edge it's still going to be flexing constantly so yeah, yeah. it's a temporary fix it's definitely not a permanent one it will get you home as long as you keep an eye on the tyre so you'll probably get home and realise you pick something up you might notice a little bit of white slime on the floor or a bit of green depending on the solution you've used. Yeah, sure. And what's the, the, the tyre paste for? Is that just to help? It's a lubricant it. and also the worth one is a bead sealer built in. So if you've got a slightly scratched inner bead, obviously in an inner tube it doesn't matter so much, but on a tubeless rim it relies on a perfect seal between the wheel rim and the bead of the tyre. Yep. So if you've got a scratch rim where something's changing with levers, or the paint slightly pitted and corroded, so you've got a slight gap and the air can sort of get between the two. It goes slightly rubbery, so it does act as a sealant. Or if you've got a really bad rim, go for an extreme bead sealant, which is literally like black glue. Well, yeah. Which you just brush onto the uh, bead of the tyre, fit it to the rim, and as you can see, yeah. it is very just like tar, ain't it? It it's is. Proper, proper silicon. Yeah. A lot of older machines we use that on. And it definitely isn't worth skimping on a cheaper brand and stuff like that. Getting them back in at this point is not easy, which is why I always leave them in and just work around it. The bonus about the worth bead sealer as well, it's black, 
So you don't take them with white gunk all over the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's nothing worse than that. It it's... does. You can get machines that have got an assistance on. They'll push it down and rotate around with it. We don't really have that much of a need for them. On. So. Excellent. Would it be the same PSI as um, the stock ones? I think yes. it's 32, uh, 32, 32. The original 411s, and we've run with standard pressure with those, and we've not had any issues. And um, when we've asked feedback as well, most customers say they just run standard pressure. No valve in yet, so all I'm going to do is just use this to pop it on the bead. Yeah. One side. <laughs> on it, take them off. Yeah, it always amazes me how little weight you need just to just to get it crack on. Yeah, it does depend on the tyre. The more rough going the tyre, the more balanced weight's normally needed. The rims themselves and them are perfectly balanced, so it's purely down to tyre and nothing else. Yeah. So is that generally what happens and the more it's, more it's yeah, freely it, spinning, the more weight you need on yeah, it? Yeah, the quicker it picks up speed, the more imbalanced it is. I've already marked it so I know where it is. So it's light spot is here. So I've marked that dead centre. So that's that stationary at that. So bring that round to about 45 degrees. You can guess on that many weights to start with. And it's now slower at picking up speed. So still needs more weight, but it's a lot closer. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I mean, straight away it kind of beefs the bike up a bit more, don't it? And in my personal opinion, should I have something a bit more off-road based right from the factory? Chain lube vibe, have you got preference? Do you mind wax? Do you mind lube? Um, not fussed? I would sooner stick, stick lube on rather than wax. You want lube than wax? Okay, I'll go and grab a lube out of the shop. Just, I mean, I do, I'm quite good at chain maintenance, so I do keep on top of it, but I find with the waxes it just flings up everywhere. Um, for a change, when they fit the numbers on these adjusters, they actually do line up perfectly each side, unlike the very early batch that were just lined, not the 450, but the early um, 411s. Some of the marks were out. And do you, do you know what that has to be talked up to? 70 newton meters. 70. They've kept them exactly the same as the previous model. Okay. Front and rear is the same. That's always worth knowing. There we go, one tyre in, it looks super cool. On the ride back we'll, uh, we'll find out what it's like on the road. So what, what is the, the service schedule for the, these type of bikes? Is it kind of just annually or...? Come in 6,000. Right. But, but it depends on your usage. If you're doing a lot of aggressive riding, which obviously these bikes are designed for, or will do rather, then I would be tempted to do it annually regardless of mileage. Yeah. Even if you're only doing maybe um, a few thousand miles a year. If you're doing but, a lot of abuse on the machine, it just needs a bit more care. But no, 6,000 miles, what Enfield now say. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad, is it? And to be honest, looking at what you've just done, it's, I, think it, I think most people could do this themselves as well if they're, if they're out and about and they're yeah. on the fly. And... It's one good thing that I found about Enfield range is they've all been designed to be worked on by the end user. It's not just a workshop friendly machine where you yep. need so many special tools. They're just so basic. Yeah, exactly. And there's no software updates to be doing. There's no overcomplicated like electronics. No, the, obviously the old one had an update for the stalling issue. The 450 at the moment, no problems whatsoever. And um, as regards to the, the kind of the air filters, when do they need looking at? Uh, I tend to check them at about 10,000, yeah. depending on customers' recommendations, but 10,000 I check them. And I tend to change them at 10, unless specified any other by the manufacturer and, well, and or it, the owner. And that's a tank off job, ain't it? Yes, with, it is. Yeah. We're waiting to see how dirty they do get. According to Anfield, they've designed it up there so it can wade through water now yeah. with the old one with it being low swung, had that limitation. But the training course, he said that was the reason for it, they put it up there. Just to... Just so you can do. Well, I was, I was going through some water that was certainly 
up to the, the top of the front wheel last week and that's always worth knowing it. Yeah, you would have. <laughs> The old model it probably would have got a bit of water ingress if you'd have got to the yeah, yeah. for a foot down and stop for a second. A bit fiddly to get to retain back into the seat at the back. Again, I guess it's always worth just doing the hand tight thing before yeah. you get any tools on there. Absolutely, it's... take them down pretty much all the way to the O ring if you can. There's no reason why you shouldn't on these. And do these need talking down or yeah. it just? A, just is a torque setting. I think it's a little bit low. I just tend to just go nip. by feel. I just nip it up. Just nip. And we've got some of the specs on the swing arm here as well. Yeah, tie size, tire size, pressures. Right away, it's chain slack. Valuable information. About a litre and a half you start to notice the sight glass. 1700. And obviously the the filter will be fairly dry, won't it? So yes, unfortunately, because it is a cartridge, uh, an element style, not a cartridge. You can't pre-oil them. But right. like we do on the rest of the Enfield range. It's a cartridge. You always fill them first. Oh, okay. So you get oil pressure virtually instantly. These, unfortunately, not. Is that just at the bottom of the side glass yeah, there? I think it's actually off the bottom though. Off I think the bottom. It's just a little bit left in the glass itself. And that's 1700 mil in there so far. Um, it's just starting to creep up now. You can just see it coming up the glass. It's literally just on the bottom edge of the glass at the moment. Yeah, it's just starting to creep up. They recommend a two minute sit period to recheck it. Okay. I was just saying there's a, a tool under the seat that fits the, the front wheel. This is uh, one bit of the bike with kind of not really explored a lot. We've, we've had the tools out when we was in India to fix the mirrors. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, so never knew that. Brings it up to 24 mil, so you've got the same diameter front and rear now. Oh, okay, clever. Instead of having to look for an Allen key to fit. <laughs> well, I wonder how many people knew that. Not me. <laughs> and here's the, uh, the tool kit under the seat as well, in the, the Royal Enfield bag. There's a few bits in there. I had a concern with this front mud guard, really, just yeah. just because it's so kind of like low to the wheel. Mm -hmm. I was thinking if you put a set of rally tyres on, would, would that have to come off or? It may well do. Yeah. Um, there's more clearance in this one than the previous model. I right. mean, the previous model, a lot of people put the little spacers, I think about a 12 mil spacer on the, the bridge that went across to lift it slightly to give more clearance on the tyre. <sighs> yes, I think it probably would need coming off or personally, I would leave the front guards on. I maybe be tempted to trim. Cut this off. Cut the front, yeah, yeah. Cut the bridge piece. Cut that has side. crossed my mind because we've we've obviously got the the yes. guard here, and we're going to get some mud flick up. But it's going to get dirty anyway when it you is. go. To... The only downside to removing that section, obviously, I believe there is only one bolt on the front edges of them. Right. So how stable they're then going to become? Right. So removing that, yeah, I've got one here. Not sure how much rigidity you're going to have left in it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's going to be one of those try and see moments. Yeah, I did notice some guys in India. They they literally they got the off. they got the grinder out. They took that off just to support the rally tyres, really. That's definitely beef for the bike up. So you just generally just go around and just yeah. just check everything and yeah, make sure nothing's bit. hanging off. Yeah, <laughs> you don't really have to swing on anything in particular. It's just the obvious little bits. Yeah, especially if it's plastic mounted. The huggers especially, guards, the fork protectors, anything like that. Um, the ABS sensors, we grease them on PDI. So we've never had an issue with any season in, but it's just one of those things, that's lambing in bracket. Yep. Guarantee if you don't, you're going to want to change it at some point. So you would normally check wheel bolts, but obviously with the wheels out, we've re those anyway. So that's the oil filter change done. We've got the new tyres on. Air filter doesn't need doing yet. Uh, whenever we do do that, we'll uh, we'll get the tank off and show you what that's all about. But well, that doesn't need doing today. I'm just generally going around the bike, checking everything's uh, all tight. Your service indica indi indicator isn't turned red yet. Right. Until it's turned red, you can't reset it. Right. Okay. Do you know how to reset them? Have you seen the videos? No. There's loads on YouTube. Right. Basically, when that turns red, 
engine off, ignition on, put it in sixth, and hold over to the left. Hold to the left, wrong oh. side of the bike, weird. Just hold it over and it will automatically then reset. Okay. But it has to be in sixth gear and it has to be red. Right. There is a lot of YouTube videos about it. But okay. We had our demonstrator reset slightly differently. We had to press the button and hold it for three seconds. Is it because I've got to do like nine more miles? Is that... Yeah, it has to go red. This is something that we've spoke to technical about and they are having a word to see whether there's any way to do this sooner. But we can't reset it until the service overdue turns red. As soon as it turns Should've red... Should have gone around the block a few times. <laughs> yeah. And it, That's it all has right, to be that. over by it, a little bit as well. Is it yellow to start then? Or? I think it's just straight red. Right, okay. But yeah, I think the last one, he had to go over by about 20 or 30 miles and about three or four days before it actually turned red, before right. he could reset it. But simply get it to that screen, the service overdue now, put it in the trip so it's there. Put it in sixth gear, hold it to the left, about three seconds, and it automatically resets. Comes up 362 days and I think it says 6,100 and something miles. Okay, no problem, thank That's you. It other thing, that's the only niggle I've got with these, you can't do the service indicator just it comes on, you can't do it early. Yeah, but if it's simple enough for people to do then. Yeah, you too, you know. there is loads. So there we go guys, oil and filter done, new tyres on. We are ready for the ABR festival this weekend and we'll put these bad boys through the test. So guys, that is the bike all serviced and ready to ride. So one thing we're gonna do is just jump on the bike now, we'll take a ride back. I'll show you what these tyres are like on the road. And it's a big thank you to Smally Cross Motorcycles in Derbyshire for letting me get that content. That's really nice of them. What a fantastic service. If you're after a Royal Enfield, come and see these guys. So I've managed to put a few miles on the tyres. We've scrubbed them in nicely. Uh, coming down the motorway, we're doing like 75, 80. And uh, the tyres hold their own on the, on the roads. Um, there's a bit of tyre noise when you get into the roundabouts or you're getting hard on the brakes you can definitely feel there's a, a difference in the tread pattern these tyres being a 50-50 are going to be a bit softer for the nature of what they're designed for so you are going to feel like there's a bit of squidginess under the tyre um, I didn't feel like I was compromised in any of the corners or I was going to lose it on any bends or anything but so far, I'm happy with the tyres. The true test is when we take it to the ABR and we take this bike off-road and we go put it through its paces. That's the bit I'm interested in. So, hope you like the video, guys. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Give us a like and I'll see you in the next one.